Good afternoon, my dear students. Today, we shall be discussing the Hindu daily dated November 12. I am sure that all of you have gone through the newspapers very well. That is very important to have the best utility of this program. Even while I was preparing for competitive examinations many years back, I could easily sense a kind of a, an unhappiness when students were asked to read the newspapers. They would spend any number of time doing the mathematics or reasoning, but when it comes to reading of the newspapers, everybody would take the back seat. But with all kind of honesty process, I would say that newspaper reading can change your lives. Newspaper reading can change your possibilities of clearing these examinations too. Newspaper reading will help you improve your general awareness, your connect to the world, your English capabilities and the benefits do not get limited to this, even your math and reasoning can improve, your comprehension abilities will improve. So, when you read a question, you will immediately understand. Anyway, good afternoon everybody and let us begin with today's job. People's trust NDA's policies prime minister, he was referring to the election victories of NDA in Bihar, where NDA was given um, um, uh, another chance by people uh, against the so called uh, survey by um, news channels. Almost every news channel predicted a victory for uh, Mahasakhim, but at the end of the day, what happened was that even though thin, NDA got a majority and continuity in power. In Madhya Pradesh, BJP could uh, consolidate its position. It snatched power from the Congress, but in the by-elections, BJP got a clear victory, and now their governance is uh, government is safe for the rest part of uh, the government, government's tenure. Very important news, government to govern OTT platforms. What is this OTT over the top? So, we know that there are plenty of uh, uh, digital uh, channels now like Netflix, Amazon Prime, etcetera. There are almost 8 or 8 to 12 such channels in India, but there is no regulator in place in India so far. <coughs> I am sorry. We know that uh, we have got a uh, uh, central board of film certification for regulating the films. We have got press council of India to regulate newspapers. We have got a regulatory body for advertisement in India and we have a, uh, a, a regulator for the electronic media, the news channels. Uh, news Broadcasters Association is there. These are all self-regulatory mechanisms, but still there is a regulatory mechanism in India for the four films, four news channels, four newspapers and of course, for uh, uh, advertisements. But in India, there, there is no regulatory mechanism in place for uh, over the top uh, 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 platforms that uh, streams videos or there is no regulation for digital content in India. But now, the government has come out with the, it is an initial step. So, all over the top channels are brought under the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting. So, now there is somebody to uh, oversee and regulate the uh, digital channels, Netflix, Amazon Primes, etcetera. In fact, a year back, government had given a signal asking these people to have their own self-regulatory mechanism, but uh, uh, no substantial work has been done on that. 
that is that could be the reason why the government has come out with uh, the it is a initial work to make a regulatory mechanism now they are brought under the ministry of information and broadcasting so please read this is an information or a news that is just and for unfolding soon there will be uh, more uh, uh, regulations coming up in the sector i hope you have a, a clear idea about what uh, ott is uh, over the top so please take down this is a very important uh, news item of the day central unveils incentives to boost manufacturing we know that indian economy is going through a very bad patch very lean patch industry does not have the confidence to invest further you see if any business is to go is to survive continuous investment is required but when the industry is going through a lean patch or a bad patch the capacity and the confidence of the industry to reinvest in the business will come down so this is when the governments have to become more proactive and generous and has to give some kind of incentive so this is what the government has uh, announced now 1.4 lakh crore in the next 5 years is what the government plans to give to certain industries production linked incentive this is a second tranche in the first tranche the government uh, tried to help the mobile phone manufacturing uh, 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 medical uh, equipments manufacturing etc etc now the government has decided to give 10 uh, uh, to give incentives to 10 more sectors including automobiles with an outlay of 1.4 lakh crore so let us see i shall discuss this particular thing a bit detail in a bit detail further slides uh earlier on the government had announced to pli scheme for medical services mobile phone special specified active pharmaceutical ingredients with a proposed outlay of 51311 crore so this was what the government announced some time back of course during the covid time 51311 crore worth uh, performance linked uh, 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 production linked incentive to sectors like pharmaceutical ingredients medical devices and mobile phones now government has chosen 10 more sectors and the outlay will be 1.4 lakh 46 lakh crore very important even from the point of view of your examination ladakh stand off india china finalizing disengagement plan this is something that uh, we have been speaking uh, for the past uh, many days we know that uh, Uh, uh on india's eastern border there is a military standoff between the militaries of india and uh, china ever since the chinese war of 1960s we lost 20 soldiers we lost 20 soldiers uh, in the chinese we thought that uh, pakistan is the traditional uh, uh, enemy of this country but china china has got uh, uh, expansionist ambitions and china has always uh, failed to recognize some parts of indian territory as that uh, as the sovereign territories of india traditionally there were ladakh sikkim and arunachal pradesh arunachal pradesh and ladakh in these two places china even now makes claim sikkim officially was uh, made china has recognized sikkim as a part of china, uh, a part, part of india and that happened only during the 2000s very a few years back finally china accepted sikkim as an integral part of india a sovereign part of india but still now china has not accepted a, some parts of ladakh and arunachal pradesh an indian state as the part of india arunachal pradesh they say that it is southern tibet tibet we know is a part of china and some parts of uh, uh, of uh, ladakh so recently chinese army made incursions into a few provinces uh, in um, uh, ladakh last two years back they made incursions into doklam 
a place in Arunachal Pradesh. So now uh, uh, Indian army has also re retaliated and now finally the commanders level meeting uh, um, have decided that there will be disengagement meaning armies will be moving away from line of actual controls uh, control to uh, specified positions. So let us see what is happening, uh, what is going to happen. So the entire nation is uh, looking at it with uh, curiosity. Week at the top, this center, this uh, editorial of the Hindu was referring to um, uh, the NDA's uh, government in Bihar. We know that uh, uh, Nitish, Mr. Nitish Kumar has been elected the chief minister of uh, uh, Bihar for the fourth consecutive time. He was a mercurial leader of the past, but this time uh, he is in the chief ministerial position with a difference. His alliance is very weak for the first time. Uh, his political party, Janadadal United, is not enjoying the first position, rather it is enjoyed by the BJP. So major portfolios like uh, the finance and uh, the home may go to BJP. So we may have a weaker chief minister in Bihar. So things may not be easier for uh, Mr. Nitish Kumar this time. Anyway, we have to wait what is going to happen. Myths and reality of election forecasts. Listen, <coughs> I'm sorry. So uh, we election forecast uh, forecasters are called cephalogists. It's a it's a science called cephalogy. Uh, we know that uh, American elections were predicted and it was almost on the predicted lines from the very beginning. Many people have been saying that the victory for Joe Biden was almost certain and that exactly was what happened. But in the recent elections in, uh, in Bihar, almost all the television channels have clearly said that the Mahasakhim uh, by uh, Tejasvi Yadav uh, uh, would uh, come to power. And uh, they all of almost every news channels predicted clear victory for them. But unfortunately or when the results came out people thought differently NDA was given even though a thin uh, majority they were given the popular verdict or the popular verdict was in their favor. So, the quality of samples and the quality of uh, uh, the uh, 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 election predictions was rather poor. The article says that um, uh, the cephalogists in India fail to deliver what methodology they follow. So, it is a science, it is a statistical science. So, when the outcome is given to people that this is going to be uh, the election results. Uh, they have to, they have got a moral obligation to give the methodology that they use, but that is uh, unfortunately missing. That is what uh, the article speaks about. Now you please read this article. Farmers firm on Delhi March. We know that the Indian parliament uh, passed three, uh, uh, three laws especially in agriculture uh, and uh, this has created all hue and crew, cry and farmers are agitating. Farmers especially from Haryana and Punjab are going for a Delhi march. Uh, the major contention was that uh, there is an apprehension of fear that agriculture marketing as such will come into the hands of uh, big corporations and there was a doubt. Uh, in the minds of farmers that uh, uh, the minimum support price MSP the minimum support price which has been dominating the sphere of agriculture in India for many many years will be done away with. But the government has tried to assuage the doubt of farmers by saying that that will not happen and the government will continue with MSP. But still the farmers are doubtful and they believe that the recent acts of parliament were against their interests. So that is why they are conducting, going to conduct a Delhi march. Government 
a few times asked the farmers to meet and some of the meetings actually took place with the union agricultural secretary, but nothing tangible emanated from the discussions and they are going for a Delhi march. So, you must take note of those uh, acts. <coughs> we know that uh, recently the farmers in Delhi, Haryana and Punjab uh, blocked uh, goods trains uh, to their places. So, railway had to finally suspend freight trains to uh, Punjab uh, after the farmers blocked the railway lines. Anyway, we have to wait and see how it is evolving. 1.4 lakh crore outlay in the for the next 5 years, 10 sectors under the production linked in incentive PLI scheme announced by the center. Central government and it is uh, you see considering their potential to make jobs and make India self reliant. So, their potential to create employment, we know that uh, after the lockdown the employment scenario in India is really bleak. Even before the COVID, the employment unemployment rate was very high, but uh, COVID has added fuel to fire and people have just lost jobs. So, to, to uh, incentivize the employment sector that 1.4 lakh crore has been given for product as production linked incentive to industries. So, uh, the 10 more sectors that are chosen on the base of their capacity to provide employment that is it. So, uh, uh, job creation, global value chain and sunrise sectors, the larger principle of self reliant India. These are the parameters that the government considered when sectors were selected. Their capacity to create job, their linkages with global value chain and sunrise sectors. Okay. So, these are the uh, larger principles in choosing the sectors says the finance minister. So, we have to see whether uh, there will be uh, uh, these sort of changes uh, will bring back the Indian economy uh, after COVID. The major complaint by many economists and the opposition parties has been that the government has not done anything to ensure that actual money comes to people. Their philosophy is that if money comes to people, if money comes to the hands of the people, they will buy and demand will be created. We are going through a recessionary phase and to overcome that recessionary phase, the only way out is to ensure that people have money in their hands and they use the money to buy goods and services. But that unfortunately has not uh, got into the minds of the government. Anyway, we have to wait and see whether there will be more financial packages coming up. On one side, the government has been mulling over um, uh, the possibility of uh, uh, having more financial packages once the vaccine comes to operation. So, once the vaccine is out, once uh, the COVID situation uh, is contained, then uh, the government will come out with a stronger and broader financial package which will benefit common man. So, we have to wait and uh, see what is going to happen. Bahrain Prime Minister, the longest serving Prime Minister of the world passed away. Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, the, the Prime Minister of Bahrain, a Gulf country, an oil rich country. He has been in power since 1971 uh, uh, and he died at the age of 84. So, this is an important question for your examination. These are countries where plenty of expatriate Indians are working. So, these are countries which are always important to India. This prime minister has been a very controversial prime minister and an unpopular prime minister in his country. Um, uh, it was uh, during 2011 that uh, at uh, Manama Pearl Tower or square in Bahrain, people uh, protested against uh, the prime minister. We know that uh, Bahrain is a Sunni Muslim country where Shia protests happened in 2011. And there were times when uh, 
people thought that his position was shaky uh, and he would not survive the Arab Spring, the Arab struggle uh, a few years back. Uh, I explained to you Arab struggle or Arab Spring which started in Tunisia then spread to um, uh, Libya and uh, uh, even Egypt where the, uh, the then governments were removed by popular unrest. Libya in Libya Colonel Gaddafi who had been ruling the country for 48 years lost his power and he was killed by people and uh, Hosni Mubarak uh, the popular president of, uh, of uh, 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 Egypt who had been preparing for his seventh term presidency was uh, thrown out of power and was even jailed. So, at that time uh, Bahrain's position monarchical position was also a bit shaky and uh, there was suspicion that the Arab Spring revolts will spread to Gulf countries too, but anyway he survived. Uh, okay. So, this is about uh, the longest serving prime minister of the world, the king of uh, 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 the, 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 the Bahrain prince Khalifa bin Salman al Khalifa. Very important, take note this is going to come for your exam. Myanmar's opposition rejects unfair election. We know that, <coughs> I am sorry, elections were conducted in Myanmar. Myanmar is a neighboring country of India where Aung San Suu Kyi's uh, National League for Democracy uh, won the election, but the opposition parties say that elections were widely rigged and uh, they refused to accept the election victory and they claim that the election was unfair by and large. So, elections in a neighboring country of India is always an important thing for anybody who prepares for competitive exams. So, in the exams to come we have to take a note of uh, the elections in Myanmar. What is the capital of Myanmar? Yangon. What is the political party's name? The National League for Democracy and its leader is the Nobel laureate Aung San Suu Kyi. Hong Kong disqualifies four pro-democracy lawmakers. Listen, I shall briefly tell you about Hong Kong. Hong Kong was a former British colony. It was in 1997 that the British government under the premiership of John Major decided to hand over um, Hong Kong back to China. Ch Hong Kong was originally a Chinese province. Uh, so, where as in the case of India, uh, Hong Kong was also a British colony. So, it was in 1997 that uh, Hong Kong was formally given back to China. At that time, there was a, an agreement that they would for China would follow a one country two system principle. What is meant by one country two system? We know under the British governance, Hong Kong had tasted democracy and freedom, but mind you in China there is no democracy, there is no popular freedom. So, even though Britain would uh, leave Hong Kong in the to the hands of China, they would uh, China would continue to follow the British system of democracy and uh, offer freedom to people. But ever since then what has happened is that uh, uh, the capital of uh, Myanmar is uh, Suraj is asking uh, some other name suggesting some other name, but mem if memory is anything to go by it is Yangon. Uh, of course, I shall check you also may please. Anyway, coming back to Hong Kong. Ever since then, China has been firmly gripping over Hong Kong, denying its people uh, freedom. And uh, last year, China has, uh, uh, and this year, this year, China has, uh, I think it was in 2019, yeah, 2019 last, China has uh, come out with some laws, uh, national security laws, which would curb the freedom of people in Hong Kong. Ever since then, there has been long, long protests that has been going on in Hong Kong. So, now um, uh, four uh, pro democracy lawmakers are disqualified by, by China. Uh, Hong Kong's uh, um, uh, leader is, is Carrie Lam, 
she uh, has signed and uh, she has uh, used the authority given by the Chinese laws, national security law and disqualified for pro democracy uh, union. Uh, there is a small parliament in Hong Kong in which 70 percent of the people members are elected and the balance are nominated. So, these out of these elected people four pro democracy um, uh, leaders are disqualified. So, the, the this can be the seven this is the only way by which the, the people of Hong Kong can show their democratic rights the election the 70 seats 70 percent of the seats that are given that are selected through uh, popular elections. But anyway uh, China uh, seems to be very strong and China seems to be very adamant in ensuring that uh, Hong Kong completely gets into its fold. So, we have to wait and see whether uh, the popular sentiments and popular revolt in Hong Kong will finally pay off. GDP shrank 8.6 percent in Q2 pushing economy into a recession. So, what is this recession? Uh, a recession is perpetuated by lower demand for goods and services. There are these there are four stages of economic cycle. I shall write down and tell you. There are four stages of a economic cycle. One is the stage of growth. Economy is growing. There is when there is a growth stage, everybody is happy. Producers are happy because there is huge demand for their products. Buyers are also happy because they have got money to buy, but nothing is permanent but change. So, at some point of time the economy may move on to a recessionary stage. Recession means recessions, recession is perpetuated by lower demand for goods and services. People do not have money to buy. So, there is lower demand. When the demand comes down immediately production will also come down because the lower demand will give signals to industry to produce less. So, recession is not a bad time. If recession persists for longer time, it will move on to the third stage called depression. If economic depression happens, then the recovery will be very, very, very difficult. During the 1930s, there was a, a depression, depression stage to the economy. It is called the Great Depression just with a lot of pain that economy is moved out of depression of the 1930s. The fourth stage is called recovery, economic recovery. So, these are the four cycles of uh, uh, four business cycles growth, recession, depression and recovery. Now, there is no clear cut definition for what is recession, but generally the economist would agree upon the idea that if negative growth takes place for two continuous quarter, it is called recession. If, neg if negative growth continues for two continuous quarters, one quarter means three months, it is it can be called as recession. So, now what, what everybody is looking at is what are the ammunition that the government uh, is going to use to overcome the present day recession. So, we have to wait and uh, see what all the things that the government would uh, do to overcome recession. RBI's monthly bulletin says that uh, uh, the pace of its contraction, the economy is contracting not growing, but contracting is 8.6 percent in the second quarter. First quarter means April to June, second quarter is July to September. In the second quarter, the economy contracted by 8.6 percentage. So, we have to wait and see what the government uh, is going to do to overcome the recessionary trend in the economy. Social infra PPPs eligible for viability gap funding. What is PPP? Public private participation. So, viability gap funding a project is uh, a project cost is assumed to be say 500 crore. So, uh, but the they are not able to find out um, 
ok uh, Vandana Shekhar yes sir when I check Google capital of Myanmar is uh, uh, I am not able to read the name anyway um, uh, I what my mind says is that the original name of uh, the capital of Burma at that time it was not Myanmar, but it was Burma it was Rangoon and for many years military junda uh, ruled uh, Myanmar and they changed the name to Yangon. Uh, and and uh, uh, by throwing them out that uh, Aung San Suu Kyi's National League for Democracy came to power, but anyway it could be um, uh, uh, the new capital they might have changed the name, anyway I shall check good, good that uh, you pointed it out. So, social infra PPP is eligible for viability gap funding. So, if the project cost is 500 crore and if for such projects uh, the, the promoters are not able to find uh, enough funds, there comes the merit of viability gap funding. So, the government or a consortium of government and uh, other agencies will provide that balance fund that is what is called viability gap funding. So, viability gap funding social infra projects are also eligible for viability gap funding in uh, 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 and government has allotted 2100 crore for viability gap funding. This is also going to be very, very important. Under the new schemes, private sector projects in areas like waste treat, waste water treatment, solid waste management, health, water supply and education could get 30 percent of the total project cost from the center. So, the government will provide 30 percent of the total project cost as viability gap funding very important news item. 5 lakh bank staff to receive 15 percent increment. There is a bipartite settlement uh, which is valid for 5 years. Every 5 years bank employees as well as offices unions will negotiate with the Indian bank association to fix uh, the uh, salary prospects of the employees and officers for the next 5 years. So, the latest uh, bipartite settlement uh, uh, in the latest bipartite settlement 15 percent increase has been provided. L unions have been trying for a 5 day week which the IBA did not agree. So, they said that they would provide a 15 percentage uh, increase this will uh, 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 um, increase the salary of 5 lakh employees in 29 participant organizations participant banks. Uh, 12 public sector banks, 10 private banks and 7 foreign banks are uh, uh, part, uh, were participants of this negotiation and the governments uh, and these banks have to shell out more than 3000 crore for uh, 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 additionally for uh, uh, thanks to the change in uh, their wage settlement. So, this also is going to be very important. Amazon accuses future of insider trading. So, what is this insider trading? There is a thing called privileged information. There is a thing called privileged information which can influence the markets. Suppose I am the uh, 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 a very important member of the director board of a company, a listed company and I come to know uh, this information is private to me only I know a very few people of my kind uh, uh, know about this information that my company is not going to do well when the financial results are out. So, what do I do? I will leak out this information to influence the market in a particular way. This is what is called uh, insider uh, trading. Insider trading is leaking out the information privy to you or the privileged information is leaked out to influence the market in a in a particular fashion. So, insider trading is not a fair market practice and it is illegal. So, now Amazon has accused futures for insider trading. Futures were bought by Reliance Industries, uh, it is their uh, um, it is a big retail arm. So, their business and infrastructure including the debt was bought by Reliance for 3.4 billion uh, some time back. So, this particular case was cited by Amazon 
saying that uh, the futures future was accused by Amazon for insider trading. The case was given to SEBI, the, the charge was uh, the, the case was lodged with SEBI, the Security and Exchange Board of India, the market place regulator for the country. Now, we have to wait and see what and how SEBI will reciprocate. Built to operate at peak efficiency, this is what uh, Mumbai Indians have nice caption. Uh, fifth time Mumbai Indians have won the uh, IPL, this time they were playing to empty galleries thanks to COVID and uh, the, the, the games were uh, held not in India, but in, um, but in Dubai. Uh, so, um, uh, of course, uh, new players have come up, plenty of new players have come up who are the most promising young player, new player etcetera. All this information, we know that cricket is uh, the biggest religion in this country, binding many people. So, cricket wherever it makes news is very important to all of us. So, that is it, that is it for the day. Thank you very much. I hope that you have, uh, uh, you are using it uh, to great efficiency, um, point out the mistakes sometimes I may commit, good, good there is nothing wrong in that. Uh, so, uh, uh, I shall uh, rectify, I shall, uh, uh, we will make it more uh, productive and useful. But anyway, um, when I give the daily quiz on general awareness, the number of people uh, who are attempting is very low and I am unhappy. I am dreaming of a situation where everybody is attempting and uh, the number of attempts becomes um, uh, a figure in thousands. So, that is what I look forward to. Uh, please honor the work that we do uh, and uh, you can honor the work that we do by attempting the questions that uh, we give and uh, that will be the real um, morale boost for us. So, please ensure that you all do the questions and show diligent efforts. Exams are coming, time is running out, ensure that all of you use the time very productively. Thank you very much for watching the program. I shall come again tomorrow. Goodbye.